Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and in this sewing tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make a fun and three-dimensional pop-out pouch. All right, so the pouch that we'll be working on in this tutorial is this one. You can see it's a tetrahedron, all right? And if you don't like this shape, you can also make it like this. And I already have a video tutorial here on my YouTube channel for this version. It's quilted, so it's a little bit thicker in the body here than what we'll be working on here. Then it also does use the pop-out hardware. You can see that it closes up the same way, but it's a little bit smaller and flatter in shape. So I'll include a link for this tutorial, but now let's go over the supplies we'll need to make this one. For supplies, you'll need two five inch by five inch square pieces for the exterior, the same for the lining fabrics. Then you'll need two rectangular pieces here that measure two inches by four and a half. And then I've also cut out two squares that measure five by five so that we can add a little more stiffness and body to the exterior squares. And this is 100% cotton woven fusible interfacing. We sell this in our online shop, so I'll include a link on where you can get a big pack of this. Then also the hardware. So this is the pop-out hardware. We sell it in our online shop in a two pack. So obviously you have enough hardware and the pin here to make two of these pouches. I'm just gonna pull out one of the hardware pieces and then you'll also need one of these little metal pins and this one gets inserted on this end once the pouch is done, but you would press here to open the pouch and then it snaps shut once you let it go. So you'll need one of this, one of this. I'll set this extra one aside for another pouch a different day. Now we're ready to move on to fusing the interfacing to the back of our exterior pieces. So grab an iron and an ironing board and let's do that step next. All right, so exterior pieces, pretty side face down on my ironing board here. Grab your interfacing square, feel for the scratchier of the two sides. That's the side that has the tiny dots of adhesive. So we'll place it scratchy side or adhesive side down onto the wrong side of my fabric. So that's that. Then take your iron and fuse it into place. Next take the two smaller rectangles and we're gonna turn under the two short edges. So I'm gonna flip this edge. And if you're not using a solid fabric like I am and you have like an actual design, obviously this fabric is, doesn't really have a right or wrong side. If you have a fabric that has a print on it, you would want to be flipping it. Let me just grab a scrap to show you here. If you have something like this, flip it so that it's pretty side face down and then turn under the edge, okay, towards the wrong side and I'm gonna turn it under just a quarter of an inch and then give it a press. Now you can measure this, or if you're pretty good at eyeballing, you can eyeball it too. The key is to be consistent on both of these strips. So I'm just gonna turn it under once and do the same thing to the other one, towards the wrong side. All right, so now that we have these edges turned, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and from the right side of our strips, we're gonna stitch, okay, just shy of a quarter of an inch. The key is to hold down these folds that we just created. So we'll do that to both sides of both strips. All right, so I'm stitching from the pretty side, just shy of a quarter inch. The same thing to the other side. All right, once you trim your threads, go ahead and turn it again, pretty side facing down. And now we're gonna fold it in half lengthwise, matching raw edges on this side and give it a press. Repeat that to the other one as well. So now let's take the two exterior squares of fabric, orient them how you want them to read in the finished pouch, meaning this is gonna be the top, this is going to be the bottom part of it. So if you have little icons like teddy bears or cars or something, turn these squares, okay, so that they read the way that you want them to because the tabs that we just created are what's going to hold our hardware at the top. So we already know that will be the top and then the fabric will be here. So however you want this to read, that's how I want you to orient the squares. Now we'll take the tabs, you can grab some clips or pins 
and you're going to line it up so that the raw edges are going towards the top and lined up with the top raw edge of your exterior fabric piece. Now you do want to center this here so you can eyeball it. Make sure that you are consistent. If you're not really good at eyeballing or measuring stuff, one way to do it is to fold this in half and crease it at the top so you know that that's the center point of this top edge. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. Fold it in half and just crease it right there on the raw edge side. And if you line up this crease with this one, then you know you'll have it perfectly centered. Make sure the raw edges line up at the top as well. And you can put a couple pins or clips here to hold it in place. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one, then we'll head over to the sewing machine to stitch them in place. All right, so these are gonna get sewn into place, oops, using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you don't move it because you got to keep it centered. And for stitch length on all these seams, I'm using about, what is this set to? A two millimeter length setting. And now here we do want to back stitch at the beginning and end. Now, as usual, I'd like to give you all tips to set you up for success. So take a moment here to stop, grab your hardware, and try to insert it in the casing that we've created. If it's super tight or it will not go through easily like this, then you know your measurements are off. Either you use too large of a seam allowance when you stitched it to the exterior square, or the cut pieces from when you made the casing were not to the dimensions that I asked you to cut them to. So double check here, you should still have a little bit of room in here in order to get that hardware to slide in and out easily. All right, once you've determined that, make any changes, fix it, redo it if you need to. If not, let's move on to the next step, which is to sew our lining piece to each one of these. So take your lining fabric, you're gonna place it pretty side facing down onto here and you're gonna place a clip or pin along the top edge and we're gonna stitch them together just here. Make sure all the raw edges match up along the top. Do the same thing for this one. And then we'll head over to the sewing machine and now we're gonna use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So now the stitching is gonna be a little bit further down than from what you just used to stitch the casing into place. So it's important to check if your casing is wide enough to accommodate your hardware first. Now three eighths of an inch on some, I would say probably most home machines is with the needle in the center position. So I'm gonna move mine over to the center position and remember to back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, and at this point, let's check the hardware again, because however it finishes here, this is what's gonna be exposed in the finished bag. So if at this point you can't get your hardware in, it's not gonna be able to fit in once you need to insert it to finish off your pouch. Now it should be a little bit snug, but not super duper snug that you can't just push it through. So I can see that I've already gotten it all the way through, and I can see the end of it there. You can usually, and I'm not going to go all the way because we'll do that at the end, but you can usually take something to help the raw edges from turning under that casing to just loop over and expose the end of the hardware. So I know that this casing is fine. Remember, take the time to check it now because otherwise you're going to go through the work of stitching the whole thing up and you won't be able to finish it because you can't get the hardware in. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side now and I'll check the other one just to make sure that my seam allowances were accurate, good. So you can already see it fits right to there. So if I tell you 3 eighths of an inch and you sew just a little bit bigger, you're not gonna be able to get the hardware through. All right, so I can see that I can already get it out on this side, so my casings are the perfect size. All right, let's get our iron, give this a good press, and then let's finish stitching it up. Next, we'll place one on top of the other, pretty sides touching, and make sure that the exterior fabrics are on top of each other, lining fabrics are on top of each other, not like this, okay? Then grab your pins or clips, and the key points are going to be the side intersection seams. So match them up nicely, then place your clip. Do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll continue to place clips around all the other sides of our pouch. All 
Now we'll go to the sewing machine and use a quarter of an inch seam allowance to stitch only along both long edges. So we'll back stitch here, come across to here and back stitch, and then the same thing on this opposite side. For now, go ahead and leave the two short edges open. All right, so remember to set your machine to quarter inch uh, seam allowance or follow whatever guide you need to. Back stitch. All right, so we have stitches along the top and the bottom long edge. Now we're gonna open up the short sides here and I want you to bring in this side seam to match up with this side seam by opening it here and then matching up those two seams. You know my trick always uh, to reduce bulk at any seam intersections is to send the seam allowance in one direction on one side and in the other direction on the other. And then we'll just place a clip right there. So this is the exterior fabric side. All right, so we're gonna stitch all the way straight across here, back stitching at the beginning and ends using a quarter of an inch seam allowance there. On the lining side, however, slightly different. Let's open it up and do the same thing. Match up those side seams, but you're not gonna stitch all the way across because we need to have an opening somewhere to flip this pouch right side out. So let me match this up, put a clip there. And then you're only gonna stitch one side or the other. So you're gonna leave from this seam to the side edge here open. It doesn't matter which one, this side or this side. So I'm just gonna put a couple clips and I know when I sew, I'll probably stitch here, back stitch, and come just past that center seam there and back stitch again to leave myself about an inch and a half or two inches open so I can flip everything right side out through there. So let's head back to the sewing machine and the seam allowance again is a quarter of an inch. So on the lining side, quarter inch, back stitch here. Now I'm going just past that center seam, leave yourself an opening here, but back stitch when you end it. All right, so we'll leave that opening and we'll come to the other side, which is the exterior side. Back stitch beginning and end, stitch all the way across. So now let's carefully reach in here and little by little flip the whole pouch right side out. Then reach in through that opening and poke out all the corners you see. Now we'll give this a press. And the opening that's on the lining side, you want to take those raw edges and kind of tuck them in and then press them because we are gonna head back to the sewing machine just to stitch that straight across and shut. You can do it by hand, but I don't think it's necessary since it's the lining and nobody's really gonna see that in the finished pouch. All right, so I'm gonna head over to the sewing machine and stitch super duper close here. I'll just back stitch and then back stitch at the end to close that up. All right, so that is stitched closed there. Trim your threads. Now we're gonna push the lining inside. Okay. Give this a good press by pushing the exterior fabric away from the casing. All right, so now the last step is to install the hardware so we can use it. To install the hardware, make sure you have your pop-out pouch hardware, one of the little pins to close it off on this side, and then a pair of pliers as well. So to insert this, don't try to insert one side all the way in and then think that you can come in with this one. The key is really to kind of feed them through almost at the same time so that they come out on the other side like this. So just put it in by a little bit and then, because they are already connected on this end. So here and here. And then just take your time to kind of work it in there to come out on the other side. Okay, now I'll work with each side one at a time because remember we have raw edges that were turned, turned under and sewn here. So just take your time to kind of push that fabric back away from the hardware until you can expose the end. 
Okay, so that's one side done. All right, so once you have both ends exposed, you're just gonna place one over the other and you can see how it fits. All right, so place them together like that in order to get all three of these kind of little barrel pieces going in a straight line because the pin that we're going to add needs to hold all that together. So it needs to be even. Then take the little pin and slip it from whichever side is the open side. You can see that this has already been closed. So I'm going to insert it here. And once it's all the way in there, I can't see it anymore. I'm gonna take my pliers and bend this little tab over it so it stays shut and in place. All right, once it's almost bent, I'm gonna try and shut it with a wider part here just to squeeze everything good. Looks nice and flat. And that's it. All right, so there you have it. That's how you make the little tetrahedron pop-out pouch. Now, if you enjoyed this video tutorial, give it a thumbs up. You can ask me any questions or leave me a comment below. If you are looking for the fabric or the hardware that I use, I always include links to where you can find the same supplies and materials that I've used in the tutorial for you. It's in the video description box below. So you can find links to get all this stuff there. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future video tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So there you have it. That's how you make the tetrahedron pop-out. Hedron, tetrahedron, tetrahedron. Go ahead and give the video a thumbs up below. Leave me a comment. <laughs> in the description box. No, that's not where the comments are.